Hello John. Hello Oliver. There's been a lot of talk about Brexit and alarm bells are running now. They're talking about imports and exports and we run out of vegetables and you say it's like the, the, the Y2K bug in 2000 with the computers and so on. Right, uh, the, the media are obsessed with the business of Brexit and uh, all of us um, seeing the worst possible scenario never opportunities there's always opportunities in, in one door closes and another one opens that has been the way throughout life uh, if you were going to throw in the towel for example when you're walking and the company you're walking for uh, closed down without that much notice no point in your whinging you had to get up after the comfortable life that you had when you were working and start all over again. Mm -hmm. The same way with this Brexit business. For example, uh, before we joined the EU, uh, become what I consider lazy, uh, we grew our own vegetables in this country. Um, farmers had often set aside a couple of acres for to grow vegetables potatoes, um, uh, cabbages, carrots, onions, you peas, they had it. And also then they would have, often a lot of people, farmers particularly and others, had orchards of which they had apples, uh, pears, uh, black currants, gooseberries, uh, etc. Uh, gooseberries, uh, um, strawberries, raspberries. And of course, on the ditches on the side of the road, blackberries, which people picked and made jam from, from ordinary people that didn't have a farm. Mm -hmm. uh, so, um, we, when we had the, 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 the before the advent of the, uh, the supermarkets, the, the monopoly situation, uh, there were some uh, family businesses that actually supported Irish. And so you had a lot of Irish food producers that are no longer here. And you had, a, you had a, the fruit and vegetables that they had was actually grown by the, by the uh, by farmers and people that were supplying them. So you had fresh vegetables. You had your own sugar. Uh, the farmers grew beets and you had sugar factories. We have no sugar factories now. And uh, farmers uh, had, had uh, produced beet, 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 which made the sugar, and we, had, we were self-sufficient. So, courtesy of the EU, we've lost all this... Our independence. Uh, uh, this independence, correct. And we've lost this ability to grow our own vegetables. Probably now some of them would have to go do courses to know how to grow, to grow what they grew from experience uh, before we joined the EU. Now, uh, so therefore the EU in some ways has not been helpful. Uh, between that and the... Um, and the monopoly situation in the grocery trade, it has led to the fact that instead of growing our own vegetables, we're important vegetables. We are absolutely. So uh, you're talking about Brexit and, uh, and the whinging that they're going on about. It could be an opportunity to grow your own vegetables. Become and not have all these imports. Absolutely, become self-sufficient. Uh, self uh, precisely, and uh, we had the best of vegetables, strawberries that you die for raspberries and there was jam manufacturers uh, doing these that are no longer there. Lamb's Jams was one, Bo Peep was another from, in County Leitrim. Uh, you had, as I say, the sugar factories, four of them. Um, Carlo, Chum, Mallow. Who's from other place? Carlo, Mallow, Chum. There were four, four sugar factories, I can't just think of the other one at the minute, uh, from the top of my head. Now they're all gone, because uh, of the EU, we're important sugar, we're important everything, and the farmers not growing the, the beet that they used to grow. They used to be took loads of it going in Carlo because they used to be down that country. Same in Mallow, they'd be tractor full of, 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 of coming with, with beet, and then there was plenty of employees in the sugar factories. And then they had a headquarters in, in Ersport Terrace in Dublin, which gave a great employment to the administrative staff. Oh, that's gone. Yeah. So, um, 
so this is the one thing that could happen from growing your own vegetables. As I say, there has been a, a decline in the in, um, in growing growing our own vegetables in this country. The only people that still do it in my book are the people that have what they call allotments in the cities and in the suburbs and in different parts of the country. Uh, these are supplied by the council at the price and they have allotments and they grow their own vegetables and, and uh, uh, they, they leave their homes and spend and spend the summer and uh, times uh, in growing their own vegetables and the best of vegetables. So, uh, I think I think they they, they, they pay about three hundred euros a year for the allotment. Yeah, well, there you are, you see. So, and they're supplying their own, but they're prepared to pay that. Now, farmers have all sorts of subsidies from the EU, but there's a price to be paid for it. Yeah. Now, as a matter of fact, it was a thing some years ago that they made a bit of a, I know, Bruce Shields made a bit of a skit of it and other ones, what they call set aside land. In other words, for no purpose whatsoever. Yeah. So, I mean, that's the kind of stupidity that uh, belonging to a club like the EU imposes on you. So, they'd want, this country would want to look at things in a very objective, pragmatic fashion. Uh, Depending on a foreign uh, 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 an entity like the EU for your prosperity is a very short-sighted sort of a vision to take. You need to be trying to be self-sufficient and uh, prudent in what you're at. There was quite a lot of a um, there was kind of a mushroom of allotments when the economy crashed. There was a lot of builders' land that wasn't making any money, of course, because they weren't building houses. So they actually created a lot of allotments and they rented them out to make a few bob. That's right and and, uh, and and people jumped at it. Very hard to get an allotment now if you're looking for That's one. That's right, yeah. Somebody, it's nearly something passed on from generation to generation uh, because they're, 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 they're growing their own vegetables and you can't, there's nothing nicer than something that's not full of additives. The vegetables that we're enjoying now and these multiples presented in the this uh, plastic packaging and all the rest of it um, it has no nutrients because it's after travelling for God knows where. No. I've come across uh, apples from bloody well Chile. <laughs> How long did it take them to travel? No. Apples from France and all the rest of it, no. uh, which is in the EU, of course. But uh, we, we had the best of apples here, the best of fruit and vegetables. You had lovely floaty potatoes that grew on the ground and, and, and fresh as anthem uh, with the clay maybe still on them. Uh, that's the best way to get them. I think people have gone so lazy now they want them nearly very well polished. One thing you never hear now is of children breaking into the orchard. Correct. I did it myself. I did it as well. And uh, the next thing is somebody be shouting at you over the wall or whatever it was and would like a jackrabbit out of the way. I can tell you that the Christian brothers, I, I, I broke into their orchard and he had a, he had a pellet rifle from a three-storey building. Like something you'd say, see in JFK. And he was shooting at us. <laughs> I'm telling yeah, you. Are. Well, yeah. probably he was shooting over your head. Uh, but you know, if you got into from one of them, you could have a bit of a... Oh, an could be. Glass of light Absolutely, so yeah. He was a bit... Uh, uh, Trigger happy. And, and sometimes, uh, the apples, uh, they'd nearly prefer them to go to waste than let somebody take them. That's right. <laughs> now, I uh, remember gardens uh, near where I lived, and I'd have uh, gooseberries and... And raspberries not the rest, and I often help myself to them. <laughs> Crossing a couple of gardens and going and getting a feed of because we're very fond of the fruit. As a matter of fact, when we were young, uh, we lived in Holt uh, near um, uh, a landlord um, called Gatesford St. Lawrence. Now, they were one of the few that were Catholics, and they had uh, a big farm and they had strawberries and raspberries. And uh, in the summertime, they'd often have children. Uh, young children because like we were close to the ground so we could pick these uh, strawberries and raspberries so I sent my brother and other ones got a job there in the summer well some was just lasted only a day and a half or two days when we were uh, feeding ourselves with the strawberries we might have been picking that many and putting them in the baskets and bringing them up so and um, whoever was in charge uh, read out names and uh, uh, the two Malones, <laughs> John and Don, <coughs> wasn't required to follow one day because we were eating too many of these. <laughs> so they must have copped it. 
Mm -hmm. uh, some of them was kept on a bit longer, but uh, it was a nice experience. So that was the kind of way we grew up. So you can see all the stuff that was grown. I mean, I, I there was there was archers everywhere, and uh, the, the jam manufacturers like Lambs had 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 farms out in Dunabeat in County Dublin, and people got part time work out there, and they produced the best of jam. And I often used to call to wholesalers and they'd have a whole heap of uh, jams from lambs, raspberry and strawberry and all the rest of it. And uh, the, the marmalade, of course, had to be made from oranges and porter, but most of the jams were, were Irish. And also, like, I mean, places like Ashburn in County Mead, uh, you'd always see adverts, they're looking for summer helpers, kids to pick strawberries and pick this and pick that. You don't see that anymore. Well, you don't, and uh, the only place now that they're grown in any quantity is in Wexford. And so there's often uh, one selling these on the side of the road in little huts uh, yeah. that you come across, and uh, which is, I suppose, helpful. And now you have farmers' markets in some places where uh, organic stuff is grown, but it can be quite dear. But when we were young, uh, the food wasn't that dear by comparison with what the income was, because the income was, was low in, for people that were in what they called permanent employment, as my father was in the police, in the Gardaí. Uh, but um, you certainly did have the best of vegetables. Yeah. You know, so yeah, this is how we're still going strong. We were not eating all this uh, imported stuff that I feel there's no nutrients in it. Absolutely. And often say that, sort of full of full of something to keep it kind of looking red. You you buy apples and they're red and you take them and you nearly they're awful. Yeah. Thank you very much, John. Thank you very much, Albert.